Today, we're talking to Chad Thomas. He's a non-lead outreach coordinator with the Institute for Wildlife Studies. As a non-lead outreach coordinator, Chad works with hunters and ranchers to better understand the impacts of lead ammunition on raptors and how they can reduce lead mortality with the use of non-lead alternatives. Chad conducts shooting demonstrations, meets with rod and gun clubs, teaches hunter education, and is an avid outdoorsman and conservationist. Hello, Chad, and thank you for Hi. joining us today. Um, Hi, can you tell us what inspired you to get involved in non-lead outreach? Uh, yeah, actually, it's something I just kind of fell into. Um, I grew up hunting and, and hiking, off-roading, backpacking, the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. So it's that kind of um, infatuation with the outdoors is what led me into a career here. Uh, to be brutally honest, I, I wanted to work with wildlife populations and spend time in the outdoors to become a better hunter, to kind of capitalize on that opportunity. Uh, but after spending a lot of time here, I, I, I've come to appreciate wildlife on a whole nother level and just the importance of conservation of like critically endangered species, such as the California condor or, or the conservation of some of our other uh, less endangered raptor species, such as bald eagles. So uh, I, I started working with my employer and, uh, you know, after a while, he, he needs someone to fill this position. He needed someone who had experience working as a hunter that can communicate with both the hunting and the ranch community to kind of better understand their, their traditions, their values, and communicate on a level and utilize in layman terms that they can, they can understand and, and they can appreciate. So I, I've definitely become kind of um, this uh, uh, chimera of acting like a crux between the wildlife management and the hunting community and act as an ambassador because I'm able to wear both of those hats. Wonderful, we need ambassadors. Um, can you tell us a favorite memory of your experience working as a non-lead outreach coordinator? Absolutely, yeah, I, I have a, a great story that was, uh, I was working at an exposition and my topic is sometimes there's some misconceptions or bias or some folks think that this isn't what we say it is. So uh, I was at an exposition talk with one individual and another individual signed off to the side and uh, he had his arms crossed. He had kind of the grumpy look. I, I could tell he's getting ready to give me his two cents. And as soon as I was able to address him, I noticed he's wearing a T-shirt that has a slogan of a hunting organization I'm actually involved with and, and a big advocate for. And I mentioned, hey, you know, hey, that's a that's Backcountry Hunters in English T-shirt. I just went to one of their events and got to meet some big wigs and saw him talk. And, it, and his demeanor changed so quick. He, he kind of almost seemed... Like he wasn't able to formulate a conversation after that because I caught him off guard. He anticipated yeah. that I was somebody that was anti-hunting, that I, I fit, all, fit all the cliches that he had been told about this movement. So when he found out that I was a, an avid, avid hunter, it caught him completely off guard. He looked at me and says, look, you know, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. I look at all this information. I think that there's a hidden agenda here. I don't buy it. I think you guys are lying. But I'm a pragmatic individual. Convince me otherwise. So I gave him a thorough conversation. We, we discussed a lot of topics. I answered his questions. He goes, you've given me a lot to think about. I'm going to go home and chew on it and think about it. Uh, the next day, my Facebook page, he actually came out. He shared our page. He said, all my friends, I have always considered this to be an anti-hunting movement. I've considered there to be bias. Uh, I talked to Chad Thomas with IWS. And lo and behold this is actually after doing my due diligence and my research this is uh this is legitimate and we as the hunting community need to address this so uh that that happened very immediately after starting this position and and i remember it to this day and it's probably my fondest memory in this position that's wonderful it's it's amazing to be able to feel the difference that you're making that immediately you know usually usually you don't get that immediate turnaround when you put in work so that's, that's just wonderful. Yeah. Um, what's, what was the most challenging part of, of becoming a non-lead outreach coordinator and getting where you are? And, and how did you overcome that? So I, I think probably the most challenging aspect of me coming into this role was learning patience and, and that what we are doing, we are working with the hunting and ranching community to understand this issue and appeal to them as stewards of wildlife and conservationists to utilize non-lead ammunition. It, it sounds so simple on the top down view and, and for those not in the hunting community, but what we are really trying to advocate here is a change in tradition, a change in culture. 
and trying to establish trust, build rapport, and, and really appeal to groups and try to let them know that we're all on the same team. Uh, that doesn't happen overnight. And I'm kind of bullheaded that I work under the impression that you can make it happen overnight. You just got to work a whole lot harder. And then if it takes more work, you just work harder. Uh, so I, I really had to kind of step back and look at myself and say, look, you know, this is going to take time that it's not going to happen immediately. We can't just wave a wand and immediately all the lead's gone. So mm -hmm. I, I've really tried to kind of keep reminding myself that, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I talk to folks. I'm going to give you this information. And at the end of the conversation, if they're not ready to make the switch, I respect their decision and I respect their right to have that decision. Uh, if I just kind of let them know, hey, you know, here's the information. If we're not there yet, I'll be here when you're ready to come back and have that second conversation or that third conversation. And I'm here to answer your questions. But most importantly, I'm not abrasive. I'm not here to force anything on you. And, and we found through a lot of trial and error over the years that that is by far the best approach to non-left outreach. Yeah, perseverance. Perseverance, man. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you hope that your work can help California condors or support the recovery project as a whole? So I, I, my work is very, very closely tied with condors. But at the end of the day, you know, one of the big things that we try to remind hunters and, and other stakeholders is this isn't just condors. This is all scavenging raptors and possibly even terrestrial mammals. So I deal with a lot of folks hunting out in the desert say that we don't have condors here and we never will. So but this issue pertains to you. Same with those that that um, hunt out of state. Um, what I hope to do and accomplish and at the end of the day I, I really want to achieve is letting hunters know that this is not a problem that this is a solution or an opportunity the hunters are not the cause of the decline of the condor they are going to be the solution in the future they're going to be what brings the condor back from the brink of extinction so I, I really hope that my legacy if you will at the end of the day uh, I, I work with hunters to let them know that non-lead is as good for them as it is for condors and that in a few years I can go out and talk to everyone and brag about hunters once again kind of becoming that flag bearer of conservation and, and those leaders within conservation, even, even though at times we're the thankless group. Um, we, we need to do what's right when no one's looking. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and you know, I, I know... I'm, I'm no hunter, but I know that um, they are a great resource for, you know, the parts of animals that don't get eaten by people that get left in the woods. Scavengers love that stuff. I mean, that's, that's huge. You know, we don't have predators out there leaving bits for scavengers anymore. So yep. it's, it's, it's it, 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 you know, the people. Condors, yeah, the smarter condors would fall around more successful hunters. Um, yeah. Knowing they're milk. Uh, they don't follow me, though. I'm terrible at it. <laughs> so they'll starve to death. They know me very well. And they go, ah, don't follow that guy. He's worthless. <laughs> it, still, it's great knowing that, that people can be part of the ecosystem in all different ways. Yep. You know, it's, Absolutely. sometimes it's easy to forget. What's your greatest non-work-related skill or accomplishment that uh, you'd like to even share here? You know, I, I think if I were, like, to give advice to anyone pursuing a career in, the, in this field or any other field, it's before you tie yourself down, do what you love, get good at what you love, and enjoy what you love. Um, I did that. I, I became an out, avid, avid outdoorsman when I was a younger man, uh, when I was clean shaven, a little skinnier as well. But uh, what, lo and behold, all these skills that I, I thought I was gaining just to kind of become better at my hobby and enjoy my Saturday and Sundays, uh, they played into my career. It, it turns out that by gaining all these skills and by communicating with my fellow hunters and plugging into that community, at the end of the day, that actually was applicable experience for to get me to this position and to make me effective in the line of my duties. So if, if I can tell anyone that uh, um, there is really no non-work related skill, it's all related. It's just depending on what direction you take with your career and what, what job you choose and do something you love. That way you never work a day in your life. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for that. And thanks for talking with us today. It's been a real pleasure interviewing you. The pleasure is all mine, Helen. Thank you very much and happy hunting everybody out there.